So in my previous video, we talked about how to get this thing hooked up to the Flame 180 ESC. Uh, at that point, we had had this, just to kind of simplify things, we had the ESC hooked up to a plain, uh, like aircraft flight uh, um, uh, receiver. So then the next step to try to get this thing to work the way that we wanted to is to get it hooked up to a flight control board. And for right now, what I was hoping to do was to get it uh, hooked up to Betaflight because Betaflight based boards are pretty damn common out there in the quad world. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to the software and that's probably a good portion of it. Uh, because of things, it seems like uh, we might be going to iNav later. But for right now, I wanted to prove out this test and this might be kind of helpful for anybody else that wants to try something like this that's, again, in that same kind of boat that you're familiar with the software and you don't really want to mess around with something else. So the objectives were, first and foremost, to get it hooked up to the flight control board and see if it would spin. And it surely should because with the other control, uh, when it was based on the other receiver, that's just should be just PWM. My hopes were that maybe some of these other wires on here, this is going to the ESC over there, that these were maybe for different protocols. So to cut to the chase, we got that to work. So here is, is the signal wire coming from the ESC, or I mean from the flight control board here going to uh, the ESC. Um, it works with PWM. It did not work. We, we tried every combination, tried to flip and flop and wires around. Um, and I couldn't get it work with any other uh, faster, more advanced protocol. So that seems to be right now what I am stuck with. Now for little gotchas along the way, uh, this, because we're powering this from a separate battery than the uh, ESC itself, it has two separate ground paths, okay? So one thing that got us was that uh, we powered it up. I don't need the, the, the ground here for the signal wire on any of the other quads that we make. So I didn't do it, didn't put it on there, didn't think I needed it. But realizing uh, after some conversation that if this one right here is on a different uh, battery pack than this one is, the signal wire going to here doesn't have a way back to ground. So at any rate, if you're having trouble with that, find a way to hook up ground. If your flight control board, this DYS flight control board does actually obviously have a ground pad here, but the CL Racing and some of the other ones out there, they don't actually have ground pads for the signal wire. So go ahead and you know obviously just stuff it in wherever you can find an available ground, okay? So that got the motor spinning, as in we went into beta flight, say okay for go with the motors, you know, agree to the, the button in there and you hit it and it spun up. And so that was really, really good. The second part of that, the second objective was to make sure that the PID loop was working well with the PWM, okay? Um, I think I saw somewhere in one forum in just passing that maybe PWM did not work, or PID did not work with PWM. It was just like kind of in passing, so I was a little bit worried about that. So the way to test that was I had to hook up a receiver. So this is an XSR, same one we use on the mini quads. Get this thing going in, get the transmitter out, bind it to this. Uh, I'm sorry, I guess I should say the reason for all of that is because I can't really arm this while it's plugged into the uh, um, to USB in the configuration. So anyways, put the receiver on. It's kind of a better, more real-life test anyway. So we plug it into the receiver, bound it to the transmitter, uh, set up the modes in beta flight so that I have an arm switch. And what I did just to make sure is I made angle mode, I, I did set up a switch like I normally do for modes, but I just made the whole entire bar, if you know what I mean here, the, the whole entire bar under modes and beta flight for the switch that I chose to all be angle mode, okay? And, uh, and then good, save all that, exit out, arm the thing, and see if it spins, okay? And so as expected, it did spin. Incidentally, be very careful that you keep, if you're testing with the board loose like this, you lay something over it, non-conductive, that's gonna hold this thing down. Because if 
PID was working, is working, and you jostle this around, this thing might go crazy, okay? So that leads me to what we did. So you have this thing sitting here, you test it on the, the, the uh, transmitter, whoop, 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 and the thing spins just fine, and that's really, really good. And so then I carefully pick this thing up, and even though it's just one motor, if I tip it the right way, this should attempt to compensate. And the end goal, the, 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 um, the cut to the chase here, is that yes, it did work fine. So we just you flip, flip like this, and this will uh, try to compensate. So PID loop was working good. That is, was the last hurdle to get across to getting this, this project to work. So all the rest of it now is just mechanical, just finishing up the frame and bracketry and milling out mounts and uh, building boxes for batteries and, and putting connectors and crap, right? So that kind of typical stuff, but nothing left that um, is any kind of major unknown, okay? So pretty thrilled about this. I think this is going to be a really good um, usable machine. All right, so you really didn't think I was gonna end the video without showing you this thing work, right? So here is all the battery packs. Here's the flight control board again here sitting on paper because it's a metal table and I don't wanna touch anything. The receivers, I think it's gonna be fine like that. Hopefully it won't fry on anything. And then here are my two 6S batteries. And um, they're not very charged, so it's not gonna have a whole hell of a lot of oomph to it. But this here is a serial connector for um, the XT60s. So we'll plug this in here, turn this into one big battery. And again, I said this in the last video, when you plug this in, there is a pretty good spark. I'm a little bit concerned about this um, at when I get these fully charged because I've, all testing has been um, on the storage chart that they came charged with that they came with and as it's we've been messing around with it it's been getting lower and lower so if uh, you know a fully uh, juiced up battery here might be kind of problematic so we might want to have a switch here so I'm going to set this right up over here out of frame sort of and then here is just my plain you know normal 4s battery for the flight control board Right? So you see what I was talking about, two different batteries, two different ground paths, so you have to have the ground for the signal. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug this in. Transmitter right here. That's going blue, so it should be bound. Everything is safe over here. We'll go ahead and plug this in down front here. Pop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just a second. Be right back. So this this battery here, if you can see the flight control board. It's off. I gotta get a different battery. Oh, oh, uh, okay. Hold on, cut. Okay, I think, think we're good now. So see, beep, 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 if you heard that, and you plug it in, it makes, uh, you know, connection to it, so we should be ready. So now hit here. Sorry you can't quite see me on the transmitter here. We'll arm this, and, uh, Transmitter's kind of maybe a little bit too close to receiver. There we go. Hold on. Safety. Okay, obviously, you can see I am very prepared for this video. Um, this, this right here is uh, composite sealant tape. It's for vacuum bags um, and sticking down drone motors and hanging posters on walls, all kinds of crap. So we're going to take this and stick that right there hopefully that's all good and in shot still and beeps are stopped everything seems to be good let's try this again armed disarmed there we go okay i'm about halfway up on the throttle the battery's getting pretty pretty dead on there but as you can see here work and swell. So now, like I said, the other objective is leaving it armed and down. So it seems 
it, it, it's, it's ready to go. If I pick this flight control board up and I jostle it around, if P, PID is working properly, it's gonna try to stabilize. So I'll tip it, you see? Now if I tip it here, it has, there's no motor here to compensate. Oops, I think I... Okay, so I'll try this again. Third battery here, arm switch up, throttle, motor works, okay? I think these batteries are doing that too. But now if I set this down here, leaving this armed, if I pick this up and tilt this, it will try to compensate this. Of course, not for the side that the motors, you know, are opposite, right? But if, so like if I tilt it here, no big deal. But if I tilt it over here, oh, now it's trying to compensate. Right? So that's cool. That is it. That is the job done. Like I said, everything else from here on out, downhill. So this is, this was a huge deal, right? So this was a complete unknown with a bunch of documentation that sucked ass. So hopefully this will help you out if you want to get one of these. So again, these are, these are about 400 bucks. These are 250 or something like that. Not cheap stuff. You got to get multiples of these. Oh, one thing I do want to mention though, that just came out, Lumineer has got a new F7 flight control board that we're are going to definitely test out because it has the ability to do eight motors and I can reflash the thing with iNav so we can do autonomous uh, GPS waypoint mapping. So that's probably going to be a thing. But for first off, we're just going to try good old standard beta flight and uh, tether this thing down, you know, because that's going to be a deal, right? And see how that works, okay? But I have high hopes for that other board as well. Anyways, phase whatever complete.